Welcome to episode 210 of We Don't Die Radio. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And I know it's been a few weeks since our last episode. And for those of you who don't know, my mom and I run a catering company traveling the United States and Canada, Canada with race car teams, cooking for hundreds of hungry men and women. So I have been in California and Virginia and Georgia, and we just drove back home to Massachusetts from Florida, and I'm so grateful that I got to sleep in my own bed last night. So I'm very happy about that. And rest assured, this week I am home, and I will be recording some great interviews to air for you, great new things. Um, But in the in-between episodes, I don't know if you're aware, but we have a Facebook group and a special shout out to our Facebook group members. And you can simply go to facebook.com and type in We Don't Die listeners. And why I think it's important to be a part of a group is if you're like me, there may be one or none people in your life that you can talk to to about life after death, uh, if you're grieving or, you know, what is it to be human and have a great life? And so in our Facebook group, lots of great men and women, almost 3,000 people that you can just share freely who you are, what you're up to, difficulties you're facing, ask for support. In fact, I had noticed a grieving mom had made a post not too long ago, and there was something like over a 100 people who had been there before that gave her some work words of wisdom. And it's really a powerful place to be supported that your loved ones, although they might be gone physically, they're not gone. They're around you and they love you and how to reconnect. So again, Facebook, if you're a Facebook user, just type in We Don't Die Listeners, private group. Um, And then also consider joining afterlifeinstitute.org. For many, many months, you heard me talk about the Afterlife Symposium that we just had in Scottsdale, Arizona, and talk about a cool group of regular people that are discussing the afterlife between science and medicine and psychics, mediums, a really great place. And I think it's just $25 a year. Be part of afterlifeinstitute.org. Now on to our fabulous show. My new friend is author Maureen McGill, and she's an associate professor at Pacific Lutheran University in Tacoma, Washington. Her first book is titled Live from the Other Side, and it's a collection of true experiences of after-death communication from ordinary folks. Her latest book is titled Baby It's You, Messages from Deceased Heroes. So excited to hear more about that. Maureen is a member of the International Association of Near-Death Studies, also known as IANS, where she has presented at conferences. She's a board member of the Seattle IANS organization. She's also a member of the Military Writers Society of America, and she's a tarot card reader, something I don't know much about, uh, but we're going to get into that also on the show. You can find out more about Maureen on her websites, babyitsyou.org or livefromtheotherside.com. So Maureen McGill, a warm welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Thank you so much for having me on here bright and early on the West Coast. Thank you so much. Yeah, 6 a.m. West Coast, 9 a.m. my time and uh, snuggled in having our coffee and tea. And yeah, I'm really grateful to connect with you. Thank you for all the work you've done, first of all, in exploring the other side, uh, you know, these conversations and and getting your words out to the world. Uh, well, you know, so powerfully, you know, what these messages are about. And, you know, these books are about ordinary people, you know, receiving these messages. It's not about a psychic or not about a medium, but it's about a genuine understanding that we all can receive messages if we just simply open to that to the message that comes through. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, there's a lot and nothing against consulting a medium or taking some courses, but um, when we, you know, when we can all do this, it's it's a wonderful thing. Well, let me ask you first a little bit about yourself and um, you're in Washington state presently? Yes, I am. I am in Washington state. I have been a professor at Pacific Lutheran University. I've just joined the ranks of phased retirement is what they call it. 
So now I, my obligations are that I just teach one course at the university in January now, and it's called Healing Arts of Mind and Body. Wow. So my life has kind of opened up kind of the, the spiritual aspects of life, and um, we work with all kinds of energy medicine, and I bring in practitioners that are in alternative uh, alternative modes in the course, and they talk about their practices, and they talk about their path, and then it helps the students to kind of think about their path and where they want to go and how they can kind of go into that balance of mind, body, spirit oh, when they uh, are thinking about their work. Fantastic. Yeah, so it's, a cool, it's a great opportunity, and the university has asked me to uh, be on uh, to teach that course here in phase retirement, so it's terrific. That is I had a great. great career there. And I taught dance. I taught dance at the university. That was my career and directed a dance ensemble. But, you know, I've always believed that uh, the awareness extends beyond the body, mm-hmm. and that's how I got interested in this, you know, other, other layer here. I got interested in the near-death experiences and then also this other layer of the intuition and how the messages can be received, you know, from the other side. How did it start, Maureen, for you? Uh, first, were you researching near-death experiences? Or, like, where did, where did your, like, my journey into discovering the afterlife started with my fear of dying. And I always find it interesting to see um, maybe what piqued your interest and to learn about this and discover this. You know, my brother uh, lost his son on a hiking accident. He died on a hiking accident. And I think that he was only 16 years old. He was on the road to go to Stanford, really bright student, and just happened to slip on some rocks, you know, and hit his head. I think that was the, really the beginning when it touched home, when, you know, death touched home for me and within my family, that I thought about there's got to be an awareness that extends beyond. Right. And a few experiences that I had and that I need to get interested in this. And then... Um, there was a doctor that lived lived here in the neighborhood. His name was Dr. Melvin Morse. He's had some uh, struggles in his life in the last five years, but I think he's coming out of that now. But anyway, he uh, he wrote a book called Closer to the Light, Near Death yes. Experiences with Children. Yep. Right. And he's written many, many, many books. But anyway, anyway, Mel was the one that uh, got me interested in the International Association of Near Death Studies, went up to the meetings in Seattle, and I, I went twice and uh, listened to these speakers at uh, speak once a month, and they each give an experience. They have two speakers every month, and they talk about their near-death experiences. And there's no prophesizing and no, you know, religious effect uh, regarding these. But they just simply tell their experiences. And I couldn't believe how similar these experiences were. That they cross over, they flatline, they go over, they come back, and yet they didn't know the person who spoke a month before, and it was a similar kind of experience that they had. You know, they saw their animals, they saw their loved ones that they had lost, uh, you know, on this side, and they were greeted by these people. And it, it was just so comforting to me to know that, yes, this, we, are, you know, our body goes, but our consciousness just continues to live on. And so it really validated that science and spirituality, what you were talking about at the afterlife uh, symposium that you had attended or you had spoke at. You know, it blends that science and spirituality together, and I love that. So that's how, that's where the interest began. And then I had this opportunity to do a sabbatical. And at the university, after you teach for so many years, then you qualify for a sabbatical, which is one year off to study or do whatever project you'd like. So I I thought, you know, I think I'd like to do a book about this, you know, gathering some experiences. And I spoke to a gal that I know who was the the chief of a CEO of a sound care corporation. It was a nursing home, you know, assisted living corporation, and she worked with the afterlife quite a bit, and she herself was a near-death experiencer, so she said, you know, I'd love to come on board with you on this book, so together we sat down, and that was a challenge, you know, writing the book together next to the computer, but we did it, Mm -hmm. and uh, we collected the stories, and uh, then just, you know, told a little philosophy that went along with it, and then, I don't know, it was as soon as the book was published, I turned to her, and I said, you know, the next one I'm going to write by myself, and it's, it's going to be about soldiers, and for heroes, and that experience that we have, uh, uh, you know, the loved ones give us communication after they die. So that's where I kind of journeyed into. And then it began the second book, Baby, It's You, Messages from Deceased Heroes. Oh, it's so special. Both, both published, yeah, both were published by Ozark Mountain Publishing. And as you know, Dolores Cannon has been a great supporter of the afterlife and communication from the afterlife. And uh, she was very open to both books, so I was very lucky, even though she passed on here uh, a few years ago, mm-hmm. but her daughter has taken the reins, and her daughter 
gave the okay on the second book. So I was really excited to have that opportunity. Mm. Maureen, would you share some of the stories from, um, well, both books, but Live from the Other Side is a book that, you know, I saw the cover and I thought, why do I know this book? And lo and behold, it's on my bookshelf. So um, it was really cool that I I get to talk to you today. But maybe some stories. Oh, yeah, our audience as well from all over the globe right now. You're speaking to thousands of people. But, you know, we, we come from all walks of life. But I think one thing most of us have in common is that we have lost a loved one. And we'd love to know that they're okay. And, um, yeah, what kind of stories do you have? Could you, could you share a couple of them from your books? You know what? I'll share a story from Live from the Other Side that I absolutely love and to me has a kind of a sense of humor. We like humor. Was, <laughs> yeah, we like humor. And uh, the story was told to me by a fellow named Dow, and Dow is an engineer here in the Northwest, so he's very brain-oriented and building and, you know, none of this woo-woo thing or anything like that. But his wife is more into the woo-woo thing. She has a labyrinth in her house, and they live in the woods. She has a labyrinth. She brings women together for spiritual groups. So I know know his wife quite well. Uh-huh. And uh, she came to me one day, and she said, you know, Dal's got a story for you. And I go, really? And she goes, yep, and he wants to tell you. So he tells me this story, and it's pretty remarkable. So Dal's mother dies, and uh, he's over visiting his brother on the east side of Washington State. And it's a little bit different landscape over there. Anyway, he's in the new house, and uh, his brother just built a beautiful new home, and he, and it's early in the morning, he said, Maureen, and I'm in the buff, I'm standing in the shower, <laughs> and I'm taking my shower there in the morning, and the window's closed in the room, and all of a sudden, he turns his head because he smells cigarette smoke, and he thinks, what, cigarette smoke? My brother doesn't smoke, uh, my wife doesn't smoke, what, what is that? And he turns his head, and sure enough, on the edge of the tub, is sitting his mother in her special red event dress, puffing on a cigarette with a cigarette holder with her legs crossed. He's standing there in the buff. He looks and he goes, oh, hi, mom. Then he he turns his head around and, you know, he looks back again and, of course, she's gone. And he goes, Maureen, it was so real. I could smell the smoke. I could see her sitting there. He goes, it was just remarkable. So he said, you know, I got dressed and I went down to the breakfast table and I told my brother and my brother <laughs> looked at me and goes, well, did you like my house? And my, oh, gee. And his wife <laughs> there, like, what the heck was she there? But Dal goes, you know, it was pretty remarkable. He thinks that he was so impressed with his brother's house and what a great job that he had done on this, on this new home that he feels like his mom was just there to kind of close the uh, family gap there and to say, hey, I'm here, I see everything. But it's so interesting, you know, she comes back, she looks younger, and in many of these stories, you know, they look younger. And I I kind of found a philosophy about that. I I don't know, you know, it's definitely not a a science philosophy Mm -hmm. here, but what I think it is, is when we pass over to the other side, many times there are trials and tribulations before we die. You know, there's an illness or sickness or whatever it might be. And then when we get to the other side, that vibration is fast often like the vibration is when we're children. When we're children, the vibration is fast and we're young and we're running around and there's no wrinkles on the face and there's no problem. You know, there's not a lot of problems usually. And um, I kind of think that this vibration is faster on the other side. And, and it's about love, just like children are, you know. And I think that there's something connected with how they look, that they come back younger and this vibration is faster. Does that make sense to you? It does. It's a cool theory. I know from lots of people I've talked to, uh, they they say even mediums, you know, p- they pick up on people and they look younger because we get to pick our best age. I think that's you know, without the glasses, without any of the ailments, um, you know. And I think sometimes they can present themselves as they they lived, but oftentimes even spirit artists, there's people that can, or mediums that can not only see the people around you, but they draw portraits of them, and so often they draw Mm. the younger selves, and it's like that's their favorite age, their favorite health, and even speaking about vibrations, uh, they, they say, whoever they are, but there's a lot of them saying it, that the afterlife is a higher vibration, like you say, and it's a slower vibration where we are, 
And so why people may not be getting lots of signs is because, you know, there's a different vibration happening. Not that your loved one's not around, but I think it maybe it takes some learning how to uh, lower the vibration or we higher our vibration to connect. Right. So, but it's so comforting to me to know that that vibration is higher in the sense that that's what love is like. When you're in love, you're yeah. happy. You're, 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 you know, there's a different there's a different sensation about your whole being. You know, your physical being, and yet this continues in this other consciousness without the physical being, and yet they become you know they look younger. So I love that part of the story. And in many of these stories, you know, they often look younger. So that was fun for Dal to tell me. He hasn't told anybody that story in the whole wide world, and. He told us that for life from the other side. So Don't you love that? It, now, yeah. how do people come through in some of these messages? Is it just visual or other ways? You know, there's so many ways that, you know, you can receive the sign. In my second book, you know, it meant through a song. Sometimes you had a song that was your song. And so that song will come on in the weirdest places like in the elevator or at church or, you know, uh, and you're walking in the store and it's like you can get that message if you just pay attention. Sometimes you're just driving in the car and that song comes on the radio and you go, what? How could that possibly come on at this point? That's Um, wonderful. Remember that Linda Ronstadt song on the bayou? What was that name of that song, that Linda Ronstadt song uh, that she sang about the bayou? I vaguely Uh, remember, but not like I could sing it to you now. Yeah, well, anyway, I had a story where, uh, in the first book, where um, this guy was just had the love of her life, and he, he passed on with a sudden sudden condition, and um, they lived in Washington, D.C., and, you know, she had to take his remains back um, uh, from Washington, D.C., and drive across the country with her daughters, and every time um, when he was alive, and they made these trips back to Washington State, which is where they had homestead at one point, uh, they would cross the Oregon-Washington border, and this Linda Ronstadt song would come on, you know, by the bayou. And um, she said on this very last trip that they were, you know, taking, and then, mind you, you know, they drove across the country, and she had her two daughters in the back seat, and they get to that same place again on the Oregon-Washington, and what song comes on the radio? But that song. I mean, he he used to stop his car and sing that song when when he used to drive that you know, uh, territory before, he would stop right at that point at the border and sing that song, and then bam, that song came on the radio. It's amazing. She just said, I had to pull over and hold the girls and just cry together, because she just knew that that was a message from him. So songs can be one way, you know, that they receive it. Another way is electronics, you know, and and here's here where we go, you know, with this vibration of maybe faster, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. is a, a vibration. And, um, Electronics. So, you know, the radio might come on and off or the lamp might come on and off or the TV. Many people talk about the television coming on at the weirdest times and what the program comes on that they used to watch together, maybe, or the channels start flipping on the TV or, you know, electronics to whatever it might be. The computer, you know, might come up. There might be a message on the computer that comes through them or the telephone, you know, the caller ID. I've heard where the caller ID has been shut off when that person has passed away and then all of a sudden, you know, the caller ID comes back on and it's them calling them on the other line. I'm like, oh my gosh. So, you know, there's different ways that the message can come. And of course, a real common way is through dreams. I think dreams are a very special and sacred way. And in a way that maybe we're unconscious because we're sleeping, that we're more open to this, you know, other world. But, you know, the message can, can be really clear. I mean, I've had a message in my life, and I have to say that I haven't received, like, direct messages like a medium receives in that way. But I was driving uh, to a funeral, actually, on the campus of a very beloved professor. And I was driving on the waterfront here in the Tacoma area, and there were a group of soldiers that were running along the waterfront. And I thought to myself, gosh, it's a beautiful day. I hope those gals that are driving the SUV in front of me are not distracted by these, you know, handsome guys running along the waterfront. And sure enough, as soon as I said that, this girl in front of me slams on her brakes. And I, of course, go into her just slightly. But I hear my dad's voice in the back seat say, pump your brakes, pump your brakes. And I'm like, 
oh my gosh. I didn't even care about the accident, although I was worried if anybody was hurt in that front, you know, in their car, but none of us were hurt. We pulled over and I thought, oh my gosh, my dad is in the car with me. Wow. Well, mind you, my dad got a new car every two years. And um, he was a salesman. He traveled like you travel, you know, in your work over and over. He traveled many miles. So it, it would make sense that he would be in the car. He was always worried about safety in the car. But to me, that was a validation where I heard his voice. I mean, you know, a New Yorker's voice when you hear it. You know, my dad had a New York accent. So I know that was him. And that was something they used to say was pump your brakes. So that you could actually get the message by hearing voices sometimes or seeing apparitions. Personally, I don't want to see the apparition. And I don't, I don't even know about hearing their voices necessarily. But you know what? If it's comforting to somebody else, more power to them and let that vibration come through. But nature's another way through nature, you know, birds or animals, the message can come to them. You know, it's all about love and it's all about unconditional love too of how the messages come. Yeah, I've heard some. Perhaps you've had ways that the message has come to you, you know? Yeah, I've heard great stories of animals and butterflies and, you know, to a lot of people, they might be, oh, it's just a butterfly, but it, it depends, you know? <laughs> you get a butterfly following you and going back and forth between your you know, friend and you. I mean, you just you just have to have faith, and I think it is energy manipulation from our loved ones. Uh, and, yeah, uh, be open. I guess is what I'm oh, trying to say. I've got to share a butterfly story that yes. actually is my story. And I hate to do that, but it's my own. But yes. anyway, I was my dad was uh, in a coma, and we had flown from Washington back to outside of Chicago where he lived in Indiana. And um, I was there with my uh, husband at that time. And uh, we had gone to the hospital, and uh, dad was in a coma. And, you know, it, didn't, it just didn't look like, you know, he was going to wake up, but we didn't really know when it was going to be. And so went back to the house and, uh, of course, went to sleep. My uh, husband at that time was pretty upset. He was, when, you know, when do you think this is going to happen? Because I need to go back to my courses and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, wow. you know what? I don't know when. God's in the driver's seat here, so I'm not really sure when, when it's going to happen. But, you know, it's going to happen when it's going to happen. So the next morning I woke up and it was in December, okay? And I woke up and I was in that state that was half dreaming and half waking. Mm -hmm. And when I had that state on the valance in the room that we were sleeping was a great big butterfly. I mean, it was huge, gigantic, okay? And I closed my eyes and I opened it and it was there. And I closed my eyes and I opened it and it was gone. And I thought, oh my gosh. And I turned... To my husband at that time, I said, you know what, I think it's today because the butterfly is that Jungian symbol, you know, of the afterlife of, right. of, the, of the beyond, you know. And um, so sure enough, it was that night at 10 p.m. that he passed away. So to me, that was kind of a comforting message. Again, it was a message that came through a symbol. So if we watch for symbols, symbols can be a way that the message can come. So we can't always think that it's going to be a direct message. You know, you're going to open the door no. and there's the message. You have to be aware. It could be a sign on the freeway, you know, that is, you know, you're wanting that message. Should I take that investment? Should I do that now? Because you're not here. I can't talk it over with you, you know. And then the the billboard says, go for it on that day. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, the message it, get clear? You know? It's important to pay attention. One of my, uh, one of the engineers for one of the race car teams came to told me a few months ago that his sister's husband had passed away and uh, very sad um, and bottom line is he said the weirdest thing started happening. The smoke detectors would go off wherever she is. And so she's like, is that, is that you, you know? And of course, wherever she was staying, they changed the, the batteries and things like that. And it happened again, you know, of course, then it doesn't happen after she leaves, but she finally consulted a medium and the medium came right out with, uh, now he's telling me that he's manipulating the smoke detectors you know the smoke alarms and uh yeah and so it, it may seem like a coincidence but it can also be that person's way of getting in touch you know and i thought that's pretty interesting mm, so that yeah. is pretty interesting really great and yeah. it's great you know that he was aware of it and right. it's just some you know turning that that awareness back on saying sometimes the grief gets us so down. Oh, you know, he's dead. He's never coming back. I'm never going to hear from him. I'm never, 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 never. And all that vibration goes kind of through that veil or whatever it is that, you know, is through the other side. And, and we go, Oh, you know, we're in that dark place and we can't get out of that to be able to even see or hear the message. And, 
you know, there's always a grieving time, of course, that we have, but if we can just open, and a way to do that is through meditation, through setting your intention, maybe at night before you go to sleep, I'd love to have a message, give me that message. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe it is that you're holding the grief so deeply and so, you know, negatively in a way that, you know, they can't get through, they can't pierce that veil that needs to come through. So just trying to lighten it up, you know, think of those good ways, you know, of um, lightening up is a way that the message can come. And also through smell, you know, if you always cook, you know, bake chocolate chip cookies in the, uh, in the kitchen with your mom, you know, you may, and your mom's passed on, you may smell chocolate chip cookies at the weirdest places and at the weirdest times. And sometimes that smell can penetrate. Yeah, mm-hmm. or the smell of somebody's cigar, or like you said, the cigarette smoke. Really interesting how that can happen. Uh, Maureen, talk about your second book, because I know uh, a lot of us, and no matter what country we're in, we're fond of our military and our heroes. And what had you write, Baby, It's You? Well, I've always had a uh, connection here with soldiers, with those who have you know put their life on the line for our country. And I don't know what it is. I've choreographed some uh, choreography for the last 10 or 15 years that has to do with soldiers and, and uh, the afterlife kind of passing. I don't even know where that came from, but um, I've been, it's been part of my heart. So I, I looked at Nola, my first co-writer there in the first book, and I just said, I want to do this one with so- for soldiers on my own. Uh-huh. So I did. And I kind of just put the word out uh, for widows that were, you know, that had lost loved ones in either Iraq, Afghanistan, Stateside accidents, I included suicide in there because suicide statistics are so high right now. Yes, they and, are. Um, and then, you know, it just started happening. One widow told another widow. Many of them said, you know, the press just wants to know how we're doing, how's the family, how did he die, what was it like when he, you know, came, you know, came back for the last time. Like, you know, they just wanted to know those where she just wanted to tell the story of, um, you know, these experiences that she had. And, you know, I wrote this beautiful poem at the beginning of the book that really tells how these couples met uh, in real life, because they're so young, and then how they meet now. And I'd love to share that with your listeners if you think this is the right time. Sure. This is your hour. So anyway, uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a song back in the uh, 60s called, by the Reflections called Just Like Romeo and Juliet. I don't know if you remember yes. that song. Yes. Yep. Probably was. Oh, you do. Probably way before your time. But, but I've heard it. It's all right now. You know, I'm speculating. wonder what tomorrow's really going to bring, just like Romeo and Juliet, just Mm -hmm. like Romeo and Juliet. So I kind of called this poem just like Romeo and Juliet. And uh, these are true ways that they met and then true ways that they meet now. So we met in the laundry room in college. He carried my underwear to my dorm room in high school at a wrestling tournament through my cousin at Walmart where we worked at a country bar on a Thursday night at a nightclub on the dance floor at a costume party with mask and a hat. On instant messenger, I was 17, he was 19, through his best friend Jeremy, in grade school where we played on the playground, on Facebook, and we were married after one month of dating at the pawn shop. I love that. They met on a blind date, on New Year's Eve, in the convertible when I stopped for the red light and he pulled up right next to me. We met at Burger King where he worked at age 16. We met on a website called Hot or Not, where we exchanged photos. When he was a football player and I was a cheerleader. But we meet now in my dreams, in the hallway when I smell him, in bed when I feel his skin touch mine, when I see his silhouette, his shoulders, his head, and how he held out his arms like he was holding a blanket. When the song comes on the radio, at the restaurant, at church, or in the elevator, When I find pennies on the ground or in the weirdest places, pennies and coins are another way that they connect. When the basketball bounces on the court and nobody's there, when I see him staring at me from the waist up when I'm in bed, when I find the Dutch key in the middle of the desert from him, when I meet the police officer who's wearing your memory bracelet, and then when I hear your voice saying, my son, when the kids see you standing in uniform on the porch, And when I find the heart-shaped sticker on a leaf, when the digital frame stops for no reason at your photo, and when he comes to me in my dreams with a message, and when I hear his voice singing his favorite song, just like Romeo and Juliet, just like Romeo and Juliet. 
Uh, so the message comes, you know, and the message comes to these loving couples that you know, lost uh, lost each other in the physical world so soon, but he still stays connected, you know, in this other from this other realm. Mm. And I just I love, I love that about how these couples met and then how they meet now. It's really beautiful. Have there been children who have seen uh, from your experience? Actually, there's a one story uh, uh, where the soldier uh, did not return, and uh, from the war. And it was, I think, within about a year, and um, the mom was standing on the porch, and uh, she was waving to the kids. It was their first day of school. They were all dressed up, and they were heading toward the school bus. They turned around to wave at their mom, and they saw their mom and their dad together oh. on the porch. And so they ran back, and they hugged their mom. They just had to hug her. Sure. And um, they said, Mom, we just saw Dad standing right there. And it's like... How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that experience for them to know that their family is together? And yes, he's still there, you know. He still loves them, and he hasn't gone away. It's just that we can't hold him and hug him, you know. Right. That's yeah. really beautiful. So, and, and it wasn't just one kid. It was, <laughs> was it two children? Yeah, it was both of them. They both wow. saw him. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah. How about uh, some of our fallen people in 9-11? Um, I think you had mentioned that you had a story or two of someone who had lost a loved one on September 11th in New York. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I had this beautiful story in nine 11 where, um, uh, Vinny was, was this gal's best, was a very good friend of hers since high school. You know, they weren't lovers or anything, but they were just close friends. And, um, he was, uh, he, um, was working, um, uh, in, and he was working in nine 11, uh, you know, uh, one of the financial floors mm. in the towers. And um, and she had just changed careers. And they had, they had actually worked together for a while, but uh, she had changed careers. And she was going to school in New York City at the time uh, when it happened. So she wasn't in the Twin Towers, but he was. And actually, they had trouble finding his body for many, for many, many, many days. But they finally did find his body. But anyway... This was maybe about, um, I think it was maybe about three weeks or a month after 9-11. And um, she was walking along the streets in Manhattan. And um, the smoke and the ash was still everywhere. It was the ash probably mostly. And some of the smoke was still kind of around. But there was a sunny day and the light was filtering kind of through the smoke. And she was walking with a huge crowd on the street, you know. And all of a sudden... She felt this hand come around her waistline, and she thought, oh, my gosh, you know, somebody in the crowd. And she turns, and nobody's, nobody's touching her whatsoever. And she hears this whisper in her ear, and it's him. And he says, that, you know, you just got to tell him I'm all right. I'm all right. Everything's okay. Don't worry about me. Please tell everybody that I'm all right, you know. And I love you, and I, I love everybody, you know. And she goes, Maureen, it was his voice. I heard it just like I heard my dad's voice, clear as a whistle. And she said, oh, my gosh, it was so comforting to know that he was okay. And, you know, that's another thing about these stories. And for your listeners, you know, we want to know if they're okay after they die. We want to know, you know, if they're okay. And uh, she said that, that that was so confirming to her. Another story was a 9-11 story where there was a fighter fire. He was a rookie firefighter. This was one of his first fires that he was called to fight, if you can believe that. Wow. I know. And he goes, and of course, he didn't make it back. But his passion uh, was cooking. And here's the story of the chocolate chip cookies. Well, he loved to bake cookies, and he loved to bake anything, really. And um, they had his ashes in turn at this memorial site. And his sister went to visit uh, the memorial. This was after, you know, they found his body and everything, had the ceremony, and he was interred. And I think it was, it was maybe about a year after again. And his sister went to visit him there in the uh, mausoleum. And she walked in, and uh, she could smell, when she got to his crypt there, she could smell the chocolate chip cookies. And she looked around thinking somebody had come in with some cookies or something, and they were eating them or the caretaker in the area, you know. And there was nobody around. You know. She could just smell those cookies that were there. So she knew that that was the message, that he was okay. And his mom has actually smelled his cologne. They've been, they often took it a long drive with her husband down to Florida from New York for, you know, kind of snowbirds for a little vacation. Mm -hmm. And she said sometimes in the car, all of a sudden she smelled his cologne. It would just come through. And so she knew that he was there from that too. And 
you know, the cologne sometimes an, is an intimate way that we connect with our loved ones, you know, if they're wearing a special perfume or cologne. Right. And that, you know, that touches our hearts, you know. So yeah. another, another magical, magical way. I like to think of it, you know, shift that vibration to a magical way. Not to, it is sad in many ways, but it's also kind of magical, you know, that this happens, that we can get that message. Well, and it gives us not only oh. hope, but if we're grieving, it gives us reassurance that they're still around. And you had brought up earlier, sometimes we're in such deep grief that it's hard to kind of notice things. And anything we can do to feel a little bit better, I think, does raise our vibrations, whether it's listening to music or spending some time with other people or uh, getting out in the sunshine, going for a walk. I know after my dad died, a friend of mine brought me to play with all these puppies, and it was like the last thing I wanted to do. Um, But it was the sweetest thing because how could I not feel love and joy being surrounded by these puppies? And I do think that those kind of things that do raise our vibrations and, and help our loved ones to get through. And, um, and you'd asked me earlier, you know, if, if I have any things that happen to me and I, try to meditate it's very hard to try to still my mind or be in the present moment but I know sometimes when I wake up in the morning or if I wake up really early I say okay let me just clear my mind just let me just breathe and pay attention to my breath and then I'll see in my mind's eye like my dad or my grandmother or I've even felt what feels like to me my cat Millie jumping up on my bed you know stuff like that And it doesn't happen when my mind's busy thinking about other things, but when I take the time to like, just concentrate on my breath and just try to be still, body and mind, that sometimes these images and thoughts and feelings come in. And I do think we have to be open and and trust that it's them, not that it's our imagination, uh, and more will come. That's so good. That's so great that you gave your listeners, you know, ways to kind of help you shift that vibration by taking a walk or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and meditation, like you said, it's hard for me as well to sit still. I'm kind of in that same club. But, um, but when we can be still, it helps. And maybe when you're on that walk, you still can't get rid of the grief. So there's like a thank you or gratitude meditation that they can do where you just thank everything, the, braid, the, the blade of grass or the little rock yeah. that's there. Or just thank you, thank you. Do that for 10 minutes. Do that for five minutes. And then notice the, the shift in vibration. I know we do that in my class, in the healing arts class, because sometimes we go on nature walks. And I, th- I say to them, you know, let's just do a thank you meditation for part of this walk for five to 10 minutes mm-hmm. and see if it shifts your mood. You know, many of them are kind of tired. They worked all night or whatever. And it's like, you know, they can't believe the shift that quickly, five to 10 minutes of just doing that meditation. And it can be walking. But thank you, you know, thank you. And it's, you know, being still, being open, mm-hmm. just knowing this and have that knowingness that, yeah, I can get the message. It'll come when it's supposed to come. And many people just thrive on it. They want that message right now. I want it right now. But you got to be aware. And, you know, those coins and pennies are another way that, you know, sometimes they leave pennies in the weirdest places under the, under the, uh, in the cars, you know, under the uh, carpet in the car. I've heard that there's, you know, people found tons of pennies that, you know, he used to carry a lot of pennies with him and mm-hmm. stuff. So it just, it's just, just another way that the message can come through and penetrate if we just become aware of it. Yeah. So that's the, so great that that helps you, you know, when you, when your dad died to just go see those puppies because they're so filled with unconditional love, you know? Yeah. And the more we trust, the more we believe, the more we're open. I think the more, you know, if you find some pennies, you know, you might think, oh, they're just pennies, you know, but if you're like, okay, dad or mom or whoever, you know, you're trying to come through, you know, show me more. And then you're on the lookout, you know, you'll tend to see more things and it'll be fun for you and for your uh, friend or loved one on the other side to say, oh, go, oh, they're noticing the pennies. What else can I do? Um, right. Uh, yeah. I'm and really... it takes time. It takes time. You know, it takes time. Sure you know? it does. There's grieving. And I, I wonder, you know, on the other side, and I, if I had the answers, I'd, I'd be the God, I guess, but I don't have the answers on that. But, you know, I wonder on the other side if it takes time for them to to pass through that veil to come back to us, you know, then maybe it takes some time there as well, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so just be, just know, have a knowingness that, you know, it may take time. It may not. It may come at the weirdest times or the unexpected times when you least expect it 
bam, the message might come. Mm-hmm. That bird might just show up right at your window at the least, you know, least time that you expect it, you know. Yeah, but it, it's a good so, adventure. Yeah, and there's so much yeah. magic and miracles and all that as part of being human and um, and be open to it. So I want to talk yeah. now because besides your two books, and I want to remind listeners, you can go to babyitsyou.org or live from the other side or simply go into Amazon and type in Maureen McGill. Certainly under this episode, I have a link if you're listening on YouTube to your websites and to your book. But you had mentioned before we started uh, the interview that you do tarot readings. Now, I don't really know what that is. I have kind of an image from what I've seen on television. Um, but what is that and why Why would you do that and why would that help people? Because I, I have this instinct that uh, not only are you trying to help people through and believe in the afterlife, but you're trying to help people live a good life. Is that correct? It is. You know, I think it's a positive aspect. It's just one more tool to get the message through. You know, a medium is a kind of a direct communication telephone Mm -hmm. line to me, you know, to the other side, and they can, you know, get the message directly. But sometimes working with symbol is also another way, is another way to, um, you know, receive that message. And the tarot is, you know, has a, a series of symbols. And what I do for the querent asks a question, and then from the question, then we look at the symbol and what the symbol might represent to them. And most of the time, the symbol makes a lot of sense. It can give us information about past, present, and future, which is pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. And um, it's uh, it's just a way of healing. It's a way of healing. It's a way of knowing this to, again, shift the vibration to something positive, to know that there can be answers that we can access. I'm not saying that I have the answers. I say that those who are having the reading really, you know, they are stimulated to receive the answer and understand, you know, their situation much better. And they can ask all kinds of questions, maybe about love, money, work, family, career, travel, whatever it might be. And then the cards can give us a sense of past, present, and future around that particular question. So there are symbols. Some people read tea leaves. Some people will take the hand and read the hand, you know, uh, and uh, so there's different ways that the message can come uh, through. But I have found that the tarot has been a great tool for myself. I've had a mentor in this work. Her name is Arlene Togmetti. She's a uh, pretty renowned astrologer here in the Northwest. And she also does tarot, has written many books on astrology and tarot. And anyway, she's been my mentor in this work. And I started to study with her on the tarot. And boy, she, she was the one that saw this in my astrological chart. I gave that to myself as a birthday gift for mm. several years. And she looked at me and she said, you know, you ought to think of getting the tool very quickly. And she goes, I would try the tarot. Why don't you come to some of my classes? So I did. And uh, it's just taken off for me in terms of how the message comes. I'd love to share with your listeners a little reading for you today if you'd like oh, to try it. Oh, I would love to. Do I have to ask a question, though, or can you do, because I don't even know what I'd ask. Can you do a general? So, well, you can think for a second if there is a question. It's, it's helpful for me to have a question. But if not, we can just kind of look at it generally and see what comes up. Yeah, you do that because I'm definitely, you know, I have a a day job, obviously, that, um, you know, I need that and able to do everything else that I'm doing financially. But I really do feel a purpose to help unite people that are in the afterlife field and bring the evidence to mankind. And I want to I want to do my part while I'm still on planet Earth. So, um, oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing to say. So anything so I've got in my that cards range. And I'm shuffling, okay. I'm shuffling my cards, but before I even do my cards this morning, I really feel like there's another book that's on the horizon for you that's coming through. So I feel like your writing, uh, your writing skills are going to take off here, and, and a book is coming. But let's see what's validated here with my cards. This is fun. So Thank you. The, yeah, I'm shuffling those cards, and now I'm going to put them in three piles. Okay. So one, two, or three, and I'd like you to choose a pile, even though you can't see them right now. The middle pile. The second one. So the second one it is. And the very first card is that you truly have been helping people uh, with grief and with sadness. And you have this amazing nurturing spirit. I don't know if it comes from your mom who has been uh, a nurturer in your life, but there's like a nurturing spirit that comes through for you in helping people with that. Is your dad, you said your dad's on the other side, right? Yes. Your dad is here in the cards too. The emperor and mom is there. But Dad is also there with you, and he, he is helping you. He's helping you be that messenger. He's helping you give, give you support in this life. 
So in the recent past, the King of Pentacles has been an important uh, man in your life. I don't know if that's a husband or a, a man in your life who's been important. But um, what's coming up for you is you've got the world in your hands. It feels like you're kind of in a waiting period or like you've been kind of waiting for the next thing. You've got the world in your hand. You're doing your work and things are happening. And then the next card out is you're protecting yourself. You're being conservative about your funds. You're knowing you're, you're kind of pulling in now. Sometimes when we pull in, that's when that creative energy starts to unfold. But in your fears, the magician is there. So there's that creative energy. You're going to be unleashing your creative energy soon, maybe doing more symposiums and maybe writing this book. I feel like a book is standing right next to you. Hmm. This next book or this next this next path that you're going to be on is really helping people pull those swords out of their hearts. So if they've had a lot of heart issues or heart, you know, heart anything around the heart itself, you're going to help them take that sort and just pull it right out. And that energy is coming. So I feel like your work is, you know, going to happen soon. And um, you're going to be a studious messenger of hope about money. You're going to, your business is going to start to unfold and, and um, things are going to start to take off for you. Family is an important part of your life. And you're going to be able to see more and more in your own intuition and your own visualization and, um, abilities to use your imagination more about bringing families together so here we go again with perhaps the grief work or maybe it's an it's unfolding about the work that you do uh, with the afterlife symposiums or whatever but there's something with families that you're going to start to bring together in this new energy gosh you've got a lot coming at you in a lot of different directions but you're so intuitive and your intuition, you are the high priestess, is going to guide you to the next place, which is justice. So you're going to have that balance that you've been looking for and, and hoping for. Your your dreams are also very important to you, too. The moon represents your dreams. So be you know keep that dream journal close by. Wow. So I'm excited for you. You've got some new opportunities coming. Does any of that make some sense? To well, you? it all makes sense. And the families, there's so many families that come apart over grief that it's including my own it's not ever far from my mind that i think you know what one of the things i want to do is really get this word out and not only about the afterlife but what grief does to us and help reunite my family and other families you know so that's something very uh -huh. very close to my heart and there are projects that are on the horizon um and and things like that so what do you now? You're just looking. So four pentacles is there. Just got to pull inside, find that balance, find that way wow. of kind of creating that space for you, so that you can make that time to happen. You know, the last card out was the page of cups, and that you are that messenger of love and in what you bring to this world. Not only in this, you know, your day job of of you know bringing nutrition to all these uh, incredible farmers, really, because they are performers in race cars. That the work that you do. And then you're bringing nutrition and you're helping them with that vibration of, you know, of um, performing at the, you know, the highest capacity. So you're a messenger of love in that work. And then you're a messenger of love in the work that you do with the afterlife. So it makes sense that that card, Page of Cups, comes up. I'm going to pick three cards about this next project now, just for fun. Let's okay. see what we've got. The next project is the sun. So the sun represents just what you talked about. I want to bring light to children. I want to bring light to the family. Mm -hmm. And the sun represents can represent warmer climate or um, younger people or younger vibration. And Ace of Cups, new love, new beginnings, new hope. And there you are, Queen of Pentacles. That's you holding your own in beauty and grace, standing in that garden with the pentacles. And we like the pentacles because that's the money card. So you're bringing home the bacon, making that, making that happen. And Spirit is standing next to that, which is Ace of Cups. So new love, new beginnings, new hope, spirit is helping you. You're going to have a clear judgment soon. And judgment cards comes up, but to me, it's kind of out of your hands. If you have a faith factor, that would be, it'd be in God's hands. If you don't have a faith factor, it would be in the universe's hands or whatever. But it would be something like you're going to have clarity now. Now I get it. Now I get the big picture. Now I think I know what, I, what my next step would be. And you're going to step away from any feelings like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if you could do this financially or Maybe there's been some challenges, uh, you know, in the financial world on it or whatever, or there's somebody around you that has, you know, pulled some financial tricks there. But it says, don't worry about that anymore. You've got the confidence now to move forward. Your dad is standing there. He's, he's at the bench right next to you, and he's got this hammer, and he's saying, go for it, go for it, at the, at the bench. And your work is, is mounting, 
and the pentacles are at the at the top. So you're going to have more travel coming up, Six of Swords in this uh, next year, I believe. And I really think you're stepping into your male energy too in the work that you do. So we you know we have this balance of male and female within ourselves. And um, in this male energy, it's like unless you're collaborating with another male, which could possibly be in this work, but Four of Wands is coming together, um, bringing groups together, um, bringing them together in a way that's abundant for them and for you. So there's an abundance surrounding the new work that you're going to do. So that's what I get. Here, I love uh, I love that morning. I love that you said new love too because I was gonna I'm like should I ask her about love life? <laughs> oh, <laughs> but then I thought that's probably not appropriate because now thousands of people are gonna <laughs> know I'm asking that question. But you said new love. Oh, who cares? I'm open. <laughs> no, I don't care. I feel like there is. There's there's definitely love coming for you because you are love. Actually, oh, there's two people coming for you. So get ready, girl. Start doing your sit up. Because it's there's, a, there's a choice coming and um, you're prepared to handle this change in your life you're ready oh my gosh I was hoping for this card all the way through I got first of all eight of wands and eight of wands is arrows of love new love new beginnings new hope some readers interpret that as springtime I like to think it's here now but anyway that shift is here coming and the next card girl is the star that there's hope faith light beauty and grace you stand there as a star card, the naked woman by the, the, the stream, and she's pouring her water, her vessel, into the stream. And she, all she does is radiate love and sweetness and that, that spiritual vibration. And right next to it is new love, new beginnings. So nurture yourself, put it out there in the world, and you got justice card. That means that you deserve this. You've been waiting for this. You've been hoping for it. That song, what is it, wishing and hoping and praying yeah, and planning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there you are. You're you're not going to be in the boat alone. You're not alone. Of course, we're never alone. But right. you're going to move over the, that troubled waters, and there he is in the boat. He's leading the way. Oh, so, so I'm going to put my fingers sweet. crossed on that for you. Why not? Now, let me ask you. The future is not yet written, and a lot of discussion has I've I've heard about. Um, you know, can people really tap into the future, or do we have free will? What's your thoughts oh, that's there? That's a big question, you know. It's like if I was God, I'd have that answer too. But you know what? Yeah. I think that there is a there there is a map, I think, that, that we are on, a kind of fate map or map that's mm-hmm. somehow choreographed for us. But I also think that there's free will. And free will and free choices, we can change our lives. We can change the vibration if we're in a rut or if we're in addictions or if we're in a bad time in our life. Mm-hmm. I truly believe that change is possible. And that we do have free will and that not everything is completely mapped, that we have that opportunity. But we got to be open to it. We've got to get out of the, the routine of, of the old. You know, we have to be open. And we need to drive our car down a different road or different path so that we can be open to that change. But, yep, we have to do the work. I picked a card about it to see if I could get a symbol that would help us. You know, no, we have to do the work. And we have to love. Ten of Cups is love, is being around family and supportive people and being in that vibration of love and friendships and you know our friends can be our family if we don't have a true born family standing next to us so open to friendships and open to giving to those who need it right now we have so many people in this world here even in the united states that need help at this time so my dad so yeah cherry maureen moving forward my dad had a great expression the harder you work the luckier you get and like you said, love it. do the work. And it, it's very interesting when we take the time to invest in ourselves, invest in serving other people, which I think is the greatest thing we can do as human beings, uh, take the focus off us and put the attention off on serving yeah. others um, and do that kind of work. It's amazing the miracles that will follow. You know, so and you know, it's not like we can just sit down and write in our journal that you know we want this to happen. Right. You got to make it happen. Just write in love. You know, you need to nurture yourself. You need to radiate that thing and say, you know what, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this door to open in my life and allow that allow that to be there. You know, don't be so busy that you're not seeing that it's right at your doorstep. You know, mm-hmm. so it's just being open to it and doing the work, like you said. You know, doing the action, doing the activity doing the good in the world that, you know, is, is the good in the world. You know, yeah. that's what gets like your dad said, you know, Someone. you know, there's a wonderful, uh, there's a wonderful person that I want to do a shout out to and maybe uh, a future interview for you. Mm-hmm. He's written a 
beautiful book called Spiritual Warriors. His name is Reverend Bill McDonald. And uh, he's a Vietnam veteran. Um, he's a reverend, and he's uh, just a remarkable spiritual being that has had so many near-death experiences and so many um, so many experiences in war and in his lifetime that are just miracle stories. So I wanted to do a shout-out to Reverend Bill McDonald, wrote a book called Spiritual Warriors. Yes, and, um, I would love to maybe speak have with a him. Maybe I'll connect you two together. Yeah, uh, thank uh, you for, for that. Potential, love to do that. But I'm excited, and even thank you for what you said about my dad. I've I've met two random uh, mediums that I didn't know. They didn't know anything about me, and both of them said independently, you know, like a year different. They said, uh, "Is your dad deceased?" I said, "Yeah." And does he did he look? You know, describe my dad, and they said, "You know, he's right by your side, and he's working with you on what you're up to." And it was very very sweet. So I love that you were able to pick up on that as well. And I'm oh, not alone. That's great. We all have our loved ones that are cheering us on, and they're all safe and fine and happy. And and I just love to imagine that they're cheering us on as we're on our adventure called Life on Earth, and they'll be right there when we cross the finish line. And uh, you know, I want to yeah. shout out to those listeners that maybe didn't have a loved family like we, we maybe you and I had. You know, I want to shout out to those people that maybe didn't have that mom and dad that showed up. But you know what? Mm-hmm. Sometimes they can show up from the other side. You know. And I had a, a remarkable situation where I, a medium uh, told a friend of mine exactly what his dad looked like and how he died and whatever. And his dad had died when he was very, very young, so mm-hmm. he didn't even know him. But, I mean, he always felt that loss that his dad wasn't near him, you know. But here she was able to pick up the exact, you know, path that he was on when he crossed over and that he's still with him and that he could confirm that for she could confirm that for him. And I thought that that was really helpful for him in his life. And he said that he'll never forget that. And to know that his dad is still with him, that helped, that helped confirm it. But, you know, we don't need a medium to tell us that. We can just know it in our hearts that our loved ones are still with us, even if they couldn't show up when they were here. Right. You know. Beautiful words. We can, we can do. Yeah. Maureen, do you welcome um, people get in touch with you if they want to find out more? If, you're, if they want a tarot reading, do you offer that to people? Yes, you know, they can contact me through my email, which is messagesfromheroes at gmail.com, messagesfromheroes at gmail.com, or they can check out my website, babyitsyou.org, or they can check out www.livefromtheotherside.com, but babyitsyou.org is a little bit more updated there with some videos and some recent, um, recent appearances that I made. So yes. thank you for this opportunity to share with your listeners and to know that their loved ones are with them and that the message can come in unconditional love. If we just set that uh, vibration that love is eternal and that truly, like you say, love never dies. It sure is. It sure is. Well, I thank you for being our guest today. And I thank you for that opportunity to share with your listeners about Baby It's You messages from deceased heroes. Oh. It is available on Amazon. Yes. And uh, the Ozark Mountain Publishing, published by Ozark. And, and they yeah. have some great books on their website as well. Oh, I'm just delighted that we've connected. And uh, thanks for getting up so early. It's been wonderful. Yeah, and I hope that we can meet someday. I would look Heck forward to that. Yeah. I'm sorry to make it up at a symposium, but I hope that we connect someday. Maybe, yeah. Maybe well, you'll get out here in, in, in some. Without a doubt, I will. Coast. Our listener base is just growing, and at the symposium, I gave every person that was there one of these blue wristbands that say, we don't die, and uh, they're blue with white letters, and then if you put it inside out, uh, it says, I am a divine soul, to remind you who you oh. are. So I think oh. the day is going to come pretty soon that people will spot people in these royal with these royal blue wristbands on and know you're part of a pretty big club and if you're someone who wants one of these wristbands they are free and if you go to my website which is we don't die radio.com you can find out how to get one and no matter what country you're in well i'm not available in all countries but in quite a few countries you can simply send a self-addressed stamped envelope to one of the we don't die radio ambassadors and they will send you a wristband so there's the wristband movement oh sandra that's so is beautiful that is coming terrific. Yeah, and even for myself, as I'm traveling, as I'm cooking, as I'm working, you know, just when times get tough and I'm looking down at my wrist and I see I am a divine soul, it's like, hey, yeah, my life is for a reason. This is about education for my soul, getting my money's worth out 
real life. Okay, I'm not going to be the victim. How can I learn from this? You know, it's very, very empowering. Um, and also, very. for listeners, if you haven't done this already, on wedontdieradio.com, you can go uh, join what I call the Insiders Club. And I just created a new PDF thing, uh, report actually not a thing a report called 19 reasons to believe in the afterlife i also have a very healing audio called how to survive grief and it says you can read the first few chapters of my book we don't die but here's the secret it's the whole book so i am definitely someone like you maureen who just wants to share and we all need friends and we all need a community and if you are somebody on facebook i love you guys that are guys and gals that are in the Facebook group but just remember go to Facebook and type in we don't die listeners and you may find some of your best friends for life for life so Maureen McGill another warm thank you for being our guest and not only being our guest but giving me a cool beans tarot card reading which I just love (laughs) Uh, and I love that this is recorded because I can listen to it again I appreciate it so in closing oh thank you thank you so much Oh, thank you, too. And in closing, I want to thank, say really a thank you for our listener for spending this time with us. Uh, as a reminder, there's now 210 juicy, wonderful episodes of We Don't Die Radio. Really good evidence that your loved ones are still around, that your life matters, and that you are really loved. So in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain, and I am super delighted to be be your host on We Don't Die Radio. And I do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important. So you have the power to make it a great day. You do. So even if you want to take Maureen's advice and think about, take five minutes and think about what you're grateful for, raise your vibration and watch what follows. So thank you for listening and we'll see you soon. (music) 